get to as many as we can. Uh, Vice President Mondo, let me start with you. Um, Mr. Comey has given a uh, passionate and very thoughtful uh, presentation about the need for common ground and the real possibility for common ground in talking about this difficult balance between our uh, legal system and uh, national security. Is there common ground? I think there's a great need to find common ground. I think that um, the great challenge here is to both protect America, and Americans will demand that. I don't care what political party you belong to. What happened at 9-11, everybody would want to resist that from happening or anything like it happening again. Uh, so that's the first element. The second element is to do it within our system of law. And I am personally convinced that that is, is doable, that we're stronger when we do do it that way. That's what you went through, uh, this idea that we can't be strong if we obey the law, um, I think fell away uh, with time. But you had to stand there at a particularly challenging moment and uh, sustain the law. And, I, and I, I congratulate you for that. You're an example, in my opinion, of what uh, should be truly honored in American government. So I, it, it's a challenge to figure, sit down and work out the elements. And I think that's what you're saying. Let's, let's work it out. Uh, I, I believe that uh, it can be worked out. There are several elements that you brought up that are really tough. You know, how do we deal with truly dangerous people that wish us harms where we have difficulty trying them? Is there a different way of doing it? Because I think that we also hurt ourselves as a nation if we look contemptuous of other person's uh, rights or uh, of, uh, uh, and so we need to find some way of doing it while retaining public respect for the American system. Mr. Comey, do you worry that after going through a very polarizing uh, episode, uh, where you had 9-11 and then you had uh, some fairly strong and controversial policies by the Bush administration and a very partisan reaction to that among Democrats, I would say particularly some of the Democratic activists, and now you've got a Democratic administration, it, it very much feels like a kind of Hatfield-McCoy uh, situation has developed. How do you get past that anger, that suspicion, uh, the mutual recrimination to get to a point where you can actually uh, take a deep breath and engage the serious issues that you've identified? Yeah, I think the change of administrations offers that kind of opportunity for both Republicans and Democrats because wherever you, whatever your feelings were about the Bush administration, good, bad, or indifferent, there was so much baggage and history that it was almost impossible to have that kind of discussion. I think President Obama has an opportunity to foster that kind of discussion because he has credibility across the political spectrum uh, and he has put in place some very serious people, men and women who care deeply about security and liberty and understand, as Vice President Mondale said, they're not exclusive, that we can have both. You know, and he's left in place someone like Bob Gates, who's the Secretary of Defense, who's a very, who's a grown up. And those are the kind of people he can use to drive a discussion. And I think people are aching to have that discussion because they felt closed off by some of the, the polarization of the last, especially the last few years. Do you feel like maybe there's a two presidencies a dynamic here where on domestic affairs, you see the president's stimulus package go through. He had no votes in the House of Representatives from Republicans and just the three in the Senate. Whereas in national security, uh, perhaps because you've got Secretary of Defense Gates, you've got National Security Advisor Jones, and, and some others who worked in the Bush administration or who are widely respected across party lines, is it possible that you could have that common ground, a, a kind of an adult conversation on national security, even though there's such a wide divide on domestic issues? I hope so. And you know, Mr. Mondale can offer a better perspective than I, but there once was a time in this country where national security was just different that we could kill each other about issues like Social Security and the Great Society and, and things like that. But on issues of protecting the country, there was a broad middle. And I think I see in the Obama administration people like that. And, and I think 
you know, I think people, I think the American people are sort of aching for that. They want to know we're being taken care of, we're being taken care of in a responsible way. Let's focus on the more urgent domestic considerations that we want to, that are in the forefront in our lives. Mr. Manuel, just to pick up on this theme of uh, common ground and whether there's this moment where the Obama administration can bring people together, do you worry that uh, President Obama and uh, his advisors may be moving too far in the direction of the Bush precedents on state secrets or uh, the handling of, um, of uh, prisoners captured abor abroad and then re uh, through the rendition process? I think they're doing a good job. Um, and I think you also ought to give them a little time. They're inheriting uh, some pretty complex problems that just don't disappear overnight. I'm sure he's going to close, close Guantanamo, but it's taken a little while to do so, and I think he's got good people at work. Uh, but there are some issues there that, that need attention, need to be worried about. Uh, if, I, if I could raise a question that I talked with you, Mr. Comey, about on the way back from the class, it seems to me that every once in a while, America gets into a position where there's some deep question that bothers us all, and the normal institutions don't quite resolve it. Um, in the uh, Army McCarthy hearings, uh, in the hearings over General MacArthur's firing, the country was really at odds with itself. They didn't know what to believe. They were afraid of thought there were conspiracies around. Uh, could, could a general really run a president? Uh, could uh, could uh, Joe McCarthy uh, keep saying these things and, uh, and never, never confront uh, some kind of uh, a civilized uh, bank of uh, opinion in America that could deal with it? I sat on the, uh, on the um, church committee, which is one of those uh, I think the kind of pivotal moments in American history where we confronted for the first time secret information, here to see for secret information about what the FBI, the CIA, the Army, uh, uh, the Bureau and so on, had been doing, often under instructions from the president, by the way, there's usually a political connection with a lot of this stuff. And I, I believe that, that, that the net effect of looking into that <coughs> and issuing a report and trying to prepare responsible answers, like FISA, uh, had, had a good effect on both our security and America's a trust in the system, and as did the 9-11 Commission in a different moment. I think it, 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 and what I'm saying is, would it help bring about this sense of conciliation and respect that we need to deal with, to maybe to have a, uh, a congressional committee that looks into the, some of these issues that are, are still stewing around in American life about how did we get into this war and were we told the truth and uh, how did we miss um, the, the warning signs of 9-11. I, I don't think we should be prosecuting anybody. I'm not talking about, but to the extent we can as a nation come up with answers that scholars and thoughtful people can look at, wouldn't that help us create a, an environment where this uh, uh, civility that you're talking about could uh, better prosper? It's a good question. I, I, I'm not sure. I don't know the answer. The, the two things I worry about are the, whatever you do, the, the unintended chilling effect that that especially when people talk about prosecuting people or having a truth commission might have on those we really need to do that guts of counterterrorism work, drive good men and women away from that work because it's too perilous for your career. I also would hate to create a culture in our political life of sort of turnabout, of, of now that I'm in power, you're in trouble. And, but, you know, I don't know the answer to that. The other, I was going to add a third. My third worry is, I don't know whether we have the leaders 
to carry it off. I, I don't know whether we have the leaders sort of at the center of our political spectrum who could stand and carry that off without poisonous uh, partisanship. I don't know. But I, I know there's a lot going on now that I think is good to go on. I mean, there's a, investigations by the Office of Professional Responsibility at the Justice Department about torture memos, investigations by the inspectors general at CIA uh, and the Justice Department. And you know, I, I don't have a strong view about congressional committees. I, what I did have a strong view about was when people said we should either prosecute people, uh, which I think would be a disaster, or, uh, and I'm thinking about the Justice Department, or we should create a truth commission apart from Congress. So on the question of a congressional committee, I'm kind of agnostic.